Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel for another painting tutorial. This is a landscape of a beautiful snow-covered mountain in the distance with a cherry blossom tree in the front. So I'm working on 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. I have the following colors I'm going to be using today. Now you can look for the full list of the colors down below in the description box of this video as well. Starting off with titanium white, light olive green, hooker's green, phthalo blue, dioxazine purple, burnt sienna, and a little bit of bl Mars black. So we're going to go ahead and get started first with a number 30 filbert brush. You can use any brush that you want just for creating the background with. And I'm going to be working on the sky, just pulling my brush back and forth, side to side. I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush to start and just add it to the canvas. This is going to help the canvas take the acrylics and help me blend my acrylics out a lot easier. So we'll quickly get this covered before it has time to dry and then come in with our first coat of paint. So I'm going to take a little bit of white first. I'll dab it just right there. We'll make a little spot to mix up our color and my phthalo blue. Okay, so we've got a nice beautiful shade of blue here and I'm going to start the first application at the top of the canvas and start working it side to side, back and forth. Don't forget about those little edges. Okay, I start to run out. I'll scoop up the rest and keep bringing it down. Now I'm gonna go all the way down the canvas. Now, as I do this, I'm gonna change the color by mixing a little bit of purple in with that blue. And I'm gonna start working that down towards the bottom of the canvas. Thank you to one of my lovely patrons for submitting the reference photo that you've taken for this painting today. My patrons receive not only the tutorial, a shout out and uh, the original painting sent as a gift. So if you want to see the reference photo and submit a photo of your own and receive a free painting, uh, I'll have a link below provided for Patreon where you guys can check that out and join if you like. Okay, so I'm just working this down towards the bottom. I'm going to take a little bit more white, blue and purple, mix up some more. So depending on how much purple you add, white or blue, the shade will vary slightly. Now I like that it's a little bit more purple up here and then it came out a little bit more blue-violet down here. And for the clouds, I'm gonna be using a small filbert brush and a little bit of white and a little bit of black. I just wanna make a soft gray shade first and then we'll have a little bit of a shadow on those clouds and we can build up our nice bright white highlights over top. So we'll come in from the top here. Now at this point, I don't have any water in my brush. I'll always let you guys know if and when and how much water I'm adding to my brush. a little bit more. Then we have another cloud right about here. I just like to gently push my brush around and wiggle. And then we have another one right here. So this is going to be a little flatter on the bottom. And then push and wiggle to make it fluffy on top. And then we have another one over here. Okay, 
And then another one, oh, about half an inch just below that. And it comes up a little bit higher right here. Fluffy, roundish on top. And then kind of flat on the bottom. So something kind of like this. Yours may look a little bit different. I'm just gonna lift my bar up and just get this top portion of the canvas. And I still have a little bit of wet sky color there, that blue. So I'll just go over that. And then I'll add my little dabs of white and black, a little bit of gray there. There's just a little hint of some clouds coming down here. Okay, with a dry clean brush, I'm gonna take some white and I'm just gonna start very lightly, pushing gently. And I'll add a little bit of white inside of each of the clouds. I'm not completely covering up the gray, so pay attention to where I'm adding the white. More towards kind of the center and the top. Once this dries, it's gonna dry a little bit darker. So we may come back and add a few more layers of white, at least one more, I think, once this dries. Okay, now what I wanna do is come in with our mountain. So our mountain's gonna come right here, the highest point, and then kind of slope down just slightly on either side. The color I wanna make for the mountain, the first base coat, is gonna be a combination of blue, purple, and some black. So I'll put it over here, a little bit of black. And it's really dark, but the color is going to be more visible if we add just a touch of white. Now we can adjust the tone looking at the photo my patron sent, the reference photo for this, which, remind you again, is available for patrons. It's on Patreon right now. It's a little bit more on the blue side. so. I'm just gonna go back and alter this color by picking up a little bit more blue and purple. Okay, so I'm gonna start, like I said, find your middle point, leave a little bit of a space, about half an inch from the cloud to our mountain. And I'm just gonna Wiggle, slope, slope it down, wiggle, and then it kind of just goes up a little bit right there. Okay, then I'm gonna start the center of that one, Let's sweep out, scumble some lines, shadows, and ridges on the mountains. We're not gonna worry about every single line and shape that we see looking at the photo. 
we're just going to go with a basic representation of that. Simplify it. So just a few little, just follow along with me, a few little lines and sweeps, dabs, little dots and dabs too. And then down here, it's going to be more solid because the top of the mountain has the snow on it. And then down below, we just see this beautiful blue and then purple coming in here. It's really a lovely place. And thanks again for sending your amazing photos in. I'm having so much fun painting them. We're going to leave the rest of this, this light purpley color that comes down into the valley here. And there's probably a little town. So I'm just going to come in here and add a little bit more block in a little bit more shadows and dark spots on the mountain. And then we'll be coming in. I'm just gonna pull and sweep up here. Pull and sweep up here. We're gonna be coming in with a white and we'll be using a liner brush uh, for that. And I'll show you guys how to create some instant realistic looking mountains. Now because in looking at the photo here, and the closer I look and study the reference photo, I can see other little things. So down here there is kind of dark area here, valley, and then so we've got the valley and then just a hint of some community, village, little town, so it just kind of goes flat down there and um, also I'm going to take just a little bit of green and mix that up, a little bit of black. So a little bit of my hooker's green hue. If you don't have hooker's green hue, you can use hunter green or sap green. And I'm just going to add a little dab here and there down on the bottom. So I'm going to let this uh, blue layer dry a little bit and then come down and work on this next part of the mountain. And for that, I'm going to be mixing up a little bit of purple and a little bit of burnt sienna with some white. We're going to warm it up a little bit. And then we've got the shape that kind of just goes, slopes down. Pick up a little bit more purple and burnt sienna, make it a few shades deeper, or a little bit more saturated and add that in as well. You can go over top of some of those lighter areas And we still have the base coat visible. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white now and let that dry a little bit more. Add a little bit more to the clouds.
So remember when I said that it would dry a little bit darker and look a little bit more faded? So it's pretty warm in my studio right now and it's drying quickly. So I'm able to come back and add what I think will be <laughs> the last coat of white. Oh, see. I would like to kind of take a few areas, the end of the clouds and add a little bit of transparent clouds as well, just kind of wiggling around. And I'm going to take a little bit of white with that light purpley color. And I'm just going to add a few little dabs, taps and dabs in here for maybe the town below. We can't see houses. All we see are little dots and dabs. And then there's a lighter area right down here at the base of the hill or mountain. It's important when you're rendering a photo to simplify it by just breaking it down into shapes. So if you're having trouble, you know, trying to figure out what everything is, just look at it and, and try to think of a shape that it uh, resembles the most. Just taking a little bit of blue, purple, white, and burnt sienna. And yeah, so just look at shapes in your picture. And instead of saying, you know, I'm painting this building or this head or this eye, just break it down into simple little shapes and it's going to simplify it so much for you. Adding just a little bit of a blue, gray, purpley color here before I come in with my bright white. There's just little hints of this in here, like a smoky, kind of a smoky color. Okay, so now we're gonna switch over to a liner brush. And I wanna use the liner brush because uh, it makes it easier to add all the little, the little lines, but I'm also gonna use the liner brush kind of like a palette knife and gently drag. So I've got, I'm using a longer liner brush, but you can use a smaller, a shorter one if you want. I'm just gonna get it wet and I'm gonna roll it around in the white, okay? And then I'm gonna start on this side and start to curve. We're gonna bring it in and create a little scoop that veers off to the right side. And just start, you can get in there with your finger sometimes too. Get really close to the top of the mountain. Of course you can use a palette knife if you want, but you can just use one brush. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit on the tip of my brush now, then I'll just come in and add a little patch here. And a few little lines here. just kind of outline where it separates to that dark blue. We're going to come in here, these little scoops, and then bring them up. And then kind of mess it up just a little bit so it doesn't look too, too much like a pattern. I want it to look a little bit rougher. Okay, I'm going to get in 
a little bit or take it a little further over to the right and then bring it back dab 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 Now the next brush I want to use, I'm just going to wipe this away, soften under here just a little bit. The next brush I'm going to use is my filbert again, and I'm going to take a little bit of white just on the very tip. And I'm going to come in here and add a little patch of white. And I'm going to just gently scoop. You can also kind of use this as a palette knife too. You really can use so many different brushes. It's how you're using it. So if I turn it over and kind of load it face down like that into the white, Hear that gentle scrape? That gives you those natural looking glaciers. And then we have a few little wiggly, squiggly lines. And then just going around in a little light circle right there. I've got just a patch, pretty solid patch of white right there. A few more. Having grown up in the beautiful part of the Canadian Rockies, I really, really love the mountains. They hold a special place in my in my heart. Of course, we live on um, Vancouver Island, the coast of Canada now, west coast. Very different. Both equally beautiful though, and I like to go back and forth and paint a little bit of each of the landscapes or type of landscape. See how we still have a little bit of that blue on the mountain from the sky color. We're going to lightly fill that in. And then I'll come back in with a final uh, coat of our dark blue. You see how you can just do a multitude of different brush strokes, little taps and dabs and lines, and combined, you'll end up with a pretty decent looking mountain. Now we're going to bring this down a little bit lower and scoop. And I like to use the filter brush for this. And right around here, a little scoop. Bring this down a little lower.
go back to my liner brush, a little bit of black, purple, blue, and some white. We'll just make that dark, dark, dark color again. And just go underneath these little scoops too and sort of outline give it a little bit more contrast with the very tip of my brush I'll come in and add a few little wiggles, dots, and dabs Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think you guys are getting some good tips here for creating um, some mountains. You can simplify that as much as you want. You can also add a tint to your white for your highlights. You can warm it up with a bit of yellow, peach, or pink. I'm taking that same dark color, purple, blue, black, a little bit of white in there. And I'm going to come in and just add a few little lines, little dabs and lines down here. And then sweep over with a damp brush, make it a little more blurry looking. And now we can start coming in with our big cherry blossom branch. I'm really excited for this part. I love cherry blossom trees, any flowering trees and I'm a big sucker for. Um, I'm gonna be using a short round brush. I want you guys to just choose a brush that you feel comfortable with. It doesn't have to be the same size as mine or look exactly like mine. Um, you can use a liner brush or you can also use, if you don't have a liner or a round, you can use the end of a filbert brush. So just use a tip like that to make skinny lines, okay? I'm going to be using a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of black, and I'll just go over to this purple blue black mixture. That's a good base color as well. Add a little bit more of the burnt sienna right in the center. And then we're going to pull A little bit of water on my brush really really helps when you've got a small brush that you're using it helps take your paint further so again from the center pull and sweep off the left this is really going to set those mountains back in the distance by adding this branch here. So I'm going to just very lightly pull a few smaller branches. I'm going to take some white
mix it with the base color and I'm going to go over take a little bit more white create that shiny highlight I'm going to go over part of the branch now it's even brighter than that in the photo so I'm going to take some more white make it a little more visible and then the rest is all just going to be the flowers except for down here we're going to come in and start adding the rest of the branches i'll mix up my purple black burnt sienna Got one that starts down here and then a branch that comes out towards the center another one here and then one that comes up higher We'll have the flowers right about here. So this having this come up high like this really helps to give us that sense of perspective and that we're high up and we're looking down at that view. And then another one that goes off like this. Now these ones are just in shadow they don't have we don't see any uh, bright highlight on them there's just a few other little lines and little branch shoots okay i'm just rinsing my brush out and the next thing i'm going to do is add with my filbert brush i'm going to add the first base coat that's a little gray with a little bit of green tinting it so a greenish gray base coat so looking at the reference photo the petals that are in shadow have this tinted green gray and i'm just going to create little blobs first and then we'll build up our petals from that and then add some leaves as well. So in the corner here, we've got some. And then here, we're not going to see any of the sky. It just comes right over, right over top of that branch. And then we're going to move on up here and add a little blob and it's really that simple okay just say you're just adding little blobs it's all going to come together there's a few visible petals at the top here and another blob there and then one over top here bring this one out to about there 
Then we're gonna add our next flower blobs down here. Now the stem paint is a little bit wet, but that's okay. You can go ahead and use that. And it's going to keep coming down all along the bottom here. Push, tap, and dab. There's going to be some white that we'll be adding, some green. We are going to come in with a green next. Okay, so I'm going to take a combination of my light green, a little scoop of each. Light green and the darker green. And gently push off. A little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of black to it just so that it's not so see through. Get a little bit more transparent. We'll add a little bit up here. So again, a little bit of black, a little bit of both the greens. I always like to show you guys how and when I'm loading my brush. It's very, very important if you're not loading your brush correctly that may be why you're having difficulty achieving the progress in your painting so just a little greens here and there it's a little bit darker down here kind of in the center here too where that branch is we have the flower petals on the outside down on these ones And it's much darker inside. And down at the base. Remember, just don't overcomplicate it. Just take a deep breath. We're all learning, no matter what, how long you've been painting, always growing and learning as artists. And although you hate making mistakes, those are when you learn the most. We grow from our mistakes. And I'm going to come in with a little bit more light green and white. Just for some brighter highlights, we're going to start building up to our flower petals. And there's a few little, a few little dabs here. Maybe they're just tiny little buds. Just take a little bit more white.
I'll just start creating these little curves, short little flicks. A little bit more white here and there. I'm going to go down to a smaller filbert brush now and start coming in with a little bit more, um, a few more petals and a few more uh, shadows. Just right in here, I'm going to come in with a little bit of black and burnt sienna. Add a little stem back in here. Make it look a little bit more graceful. And in here, add a curve. I'm pulling curve this over. I'm going to add some flowers on top of that too. Then I'm going to take some white. And just re-highlight that. And I could just paint uh, flower petals over that, but I'm just going to take it off right now because it's wet and I can. And then with a clean brush, I'm going to load my brush with a white. And I'm just going to come in and add like little heart shapes. And again, this is going to fade as it dries. So we'll have a few lighter shades of gray when the white over top of the gray petals is all dry. definitely want to have some petals that are going to be brighter than the rest and just sneak in a few little curvy lines here and there for petals that might be around the side that we can't see the rest of you know the full flower Can also kind of just wiggle and create little scoops and petals like that. I'm just adding a little bit of water to thin it out so we get some transparent petals. And then I'll pick up a little bit more white. And 
And I'm going to make a little bit more shadow petals here, or petal, petals in shadow. A little bit of green, purple, and blue this time. You could just use black, green, and white, but I want to have so a little bit different than the rest. I'm going to be using my Holbein Luminous Pink, and I've got way more than I need here. I mean, I just want a slightly tint. Just like the lightest, most delicate shade of pink. I'm going to take a little bit of my light green with my pink, just warm up the tone so it makes it a little bit more peachy. I'm just going to add a few little dabs inside here. Take a little bit more of the green. A little bit on the tip of my brush like this. Just pick a few spots. To add some final highlights. I'm gonna go back over to my green with a black mixture. few petals in here. So we can add a little bit more pink to a few. I haven't even washed my brush off. I've got a little bit of green in there as well.
few more branches. Clean brush, black and burnt sienna. And then just go over some areas that are the darkest. Bring in just a little bit more contrast. Go back over to my black purple white and a little bit of a little bit of burnt sienna in there a little bit more white pick up a little bit of pink Almost done. Just gonna add a few more dark patches here and green, a little scoop of each. So, pretty much everything we're doing for these flowers. Are just little blobs but collectively like as it comes together it looks pretty I'm going to add the final highlights here, just some white. Last little bit of white on my mountain here.
little bit of white to finish up these clouds. bring back a little bit more gray for the petals here. so much for joining me today this was really really fun and i hope i get to paint your photo next send it to me if you're a patreon i'll give you my email and you can send it to me i can't wait to see yours have fun have a wonderful day and i'll see you soon in my next video bye